All right, Rick. So our next topic today is going to be back in the Batman world. It's been a lot of Batman news lately, which uh, I'm never going to be complaining about because Batman is my favorite superhero. So I'm fine with it. But the, the, not necessarily Batman news as far as Catwoman news right now, because Zoe Kravitz was recently doing an interview here and she was asked... Uh, uh, it was about a, a show that she's doing on Hulu right now, I believe, but she was asked about uh, her role as Catwoman and uh, Robert Pattinson as Batman. So I'm going to skip down. This is from Variety, if anyone wants to read the whole thing. I'm going to focus on the two segments where she was actually talking about the Batman stuff, because that's the stuff that uh, I, I'm going to cover and Rick is going to cover here. Sure. And uh, But it was some good stuff, and... Uh, Rick, I'm going to get your thoughts on this, too. I'm going to read just a couple of these segments out for you, so I'm not sure if you got to read the whole story or anything on it. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't like a whole lot of like super amazing news by any means, but uh, there, there was some good stuff in there that she said, so I figured we'll talk about it right here. Um, but she said uh, the first time that she saw herself in the suit, she, she thought it was cool, and uh, that is one thing that I'm actually... I'm, I'm curious about more so anything is what her look's going to be as Catwoman, because yeah. we saw in... Like uh, the Dark Knight Rises, for instance, they Christopher Nolan with Anne Hathaway playing uh, Selena Kyle. They went with a much more kind of like Batman suit, where it was a much more it's like a more realistic rounded thing. and real. Yeah, they did that thing right. So I'm like the only nod that they really had to her being anything remotely related to Catwoman from the comics is when she popped her goggles up. It looked like cat ear. Yeah, and that was really the only thing that r really even referenced her being Catwoman, other than the. It's Her totally different than like Catwoman story from the comics or the yeah. TV shows or anything yeah, I like mean, that. Now the Halle Berry Catwoman it was <laughs> that wasn't anything like the comics either. No. Um and uh with that movie, dude. Oh my god. <laughs> I like Halle Berry. Um, she but yeah, Halle Berry's great. Oh yeah. And uh, like she was great in John Wick three. Did you see that man? And no. She, did you see John Wick three? Dude, you gotta go see John Wick three. She was fucking awesome in John Wick. I love John III, Wick. Dude. No, dude, she was she was, she was badass in that movie, dude. Like, you gotta go watch. At least what, look up on YouTube after the show. Like, look up the, uh, just the fight scene with her dogs and Keanu. Yeah. It was incredible, dude. It was incredible. You watch and you're just like, why wasn't this cat woman? Like, yeah. Where was this shit at? Exactly. But, uh, so yeah, she was talking about that and she, she said that she's just been trying to focus more on, you know, the character and, you know, what she got from the character and not try to focus so much on, you know, what everyone thinks of Catwoman. Kind of like we were just saying, like, you know, it's not going to be necessarily the same thing in, in the comics all the time. Uh, like you'll see with pretty much any movie, they like they'll they'll take inspiration, but uh, it's not going to be a direct one to one copy of a comic book on screen. Like, yeah. I mean, Captain America Civil War had elements of the Civil War stuff from the comics, but in no way was that Civil War from the comics. It, no. was, it was very, very, very different. It was their own adaptation. And uh, it, so it's good, it's always good for someone to, to not dwell too much on, you know, what the fans want to see and, like, worrying about letting people down and, like, all that kind of stuff. So she was just focusing on, you know, the script. She she essentially says that she, she loves her suit, and uh, which... Like, again, I'm just more curious about what she's going to look like in the suit just because, like, the okay. costumes are always cool, man. Like, they're just always cool. And, uh, but she says the script was phenomenal, which, I mean, we've been kind of hearing that since Matt Reeves started working on it. And anybody who's been close to the script has always said, oh, the script's phenomenal. But at the same time, an actor saying that the project they're working on is good is kind of a no-brainer. They're not going to come out here and start shit-talking their movie and say, oh, it's kind of garbage, you know, whatever, yeah. you know, because that's yeah. not going to make people excited, right? Um, even it's, though it would be a story. It's a bit of a biased opinion. Yeah, I mean, we'd be, if, if someone came out and started talking shit about the movie, I'm sure we'd, it'd be in the news. Um, so we'd have some stuff to talk about, but, uh, you know, it, so it is what it is. Like, obviously, she's not going to say anything bad, but no, no. she, she, Got asked if she had spoken to Michelle Pfeiffer or Halle Berry. She said she had. And, like, nothing exciting, really. Just, uh, they wish her luck, essentially, to, to summarize. But then, she was asked about, uh, you know, why is Robert Pattinson perfect to play Batman? 
And uh, she, I, I'm going to read this real quick. She says, first of all, he's just a really good actor. He started out as this kind of teen pop sensation. And then I think we all kind of saw through his work that there was a lot more going on, which we did. If you see his other films, like, you know, he's, he's come a long way since Edward Cullen. Yeah. And uh, yeah. So then uh, we have, uh, or no, he, he's a really interesting artist and in that, uh, that is very much Batman in a way. We have the illusion of Bruce Wayne. And then we have Batman in the shadows, and that has a lot for uh, that has a lot more complicated things going on. And Rick, that line, yeah, kind of takes me back to what I was saying before about Ben Affleck's Batman, to where they really nailed the fact that Bruce Wayne is the mask, and Batman, Batman. is what you get. Like yeah. Bruce Wayne died in the alley, and Batman was born. And like a line like that, like she was just saying about. Uh, Robert Pattinson's Batman, that that got that, that gives me some hope that they they understand that, yeah, you know, and like sure. and that's the approach that they're kind of going for. So she's she kind of go, goes off of that and says that you know, just in that he's perfect for the role because he can kind of relate to it in that way, because he started off as like this and then he kind of turned himself into something else, which is kind of kind of like Batman. Yeah, and uh, then she goes on just to say that uh, he looks good in the suit, man. He looks good in the suit. That's a good jawline, and it is. So, it is a very good. And it, like it really is. Like he, <laughs> does, and from what we've seen of the suit, he does look good in the suit. He, yeah, he yeah. does have one hell of a jawline. Indeed. So I don't know. Like I said, the the really only, and then she goes on to say, like I think it's perfect, perfect casting. But again, anybody working on a project is gonna just typically say good things about X project. So. The only thing that I thought was interesting was really, like I said, the fact that she was kind of correlating the fact that Bruce Wayne is the mask, is essentially what she was saying. Like, yeah, and, yeah. And that part has me excited because I, I agree with her in that Robert Pattinson, just based on his career, has kind of lived through a very similar situation. And uh, so, yeah, he could definitely bring, like, his, his talent aside, like, even that one little you know, connective tissue, connect the dots, uh, conspiracy theory, tinfoil hat thing. You know, he does, he, he has his own personal experience he can kind of draw on. Yeah, so, yeah. I like that. And, uh, Definitely. yeah, I mean, it's got me, it didn't really get me more excited to see Batman by any means, but I'm already excited to see it. Oh, for so, sure. I mean, it just kind of is what it is. Are you, uh, what did you think about the Zoe Kravitz uh, being Catwoman in general and then, like, what do you think about this Catwoman actually being a presence in the film? Like, as um, it is. Well, I mean, I'm just hoping this movie isn't going to have, like, character overload by any means. Like, villains and, you know, side characters, that sort of thing. But uh, I think she's a good choice. And, um, you know, I think she will uh, mesh pretty well with Robert Pattinson. It sounds like they already do. And, you know, we'll just have to kind of see where it goes. But uh, I've never been a huge Catwoman fan by any means. But uh, as long as they do it right, I mean, I think it'd be good. Yeah, she's one of those characters, at least two, who has definitely evolved over the years. Yeah. Uh, like, she's had a much more, not really necessarily important, but she, she has been a much more predominant character and had a lot more things to do in the comics lately than she, she kind of has in the past. Yeah. Like, I mean, her and Bruce, like, had, like, a wedding, like, just recently in, like, the latest uh, comic run and everything. I'm not going to spoil anything, but, like, that that's... Spoiler she's alert. Been, she, throughout the whole... Uh, like Tom King run of the one of the latest Batman runs, like she was a she was a through line in it pretty much just as much as Bruce was. So yeah, she's definitely been uh, as a character. She's definitely evolved over the years, but she's been much more like I don't know, maybe popular and kind of brought into just a lot more mainstream kind of you know, stories in general. Um, so I definitely share your concern with the overcrowdedness of the villains and stuff, but like. Catwoman is definitely like she's like I said she's evolved and she's not really she's not going to be a villain. No, I mean no. I, I don't know how much she's going to like not be a villain. You know she, she's going to be like I imagine the more like anti-hero. I was just of, about to say that. Yeah, but I'm sure she's going to be in it, and like, I would imagine they'd be going more of the the romance route for for Bruce as opposed to her just being. I don't know, kind of like uh, like Michelle Pfeiffer's Catwoman. Like yeah. they kind of touched on the romance thing a little bit. But yeah. She was also just kind of crazy. Yeah. And then, 
like much so. the same with uh Halle Berry went aside, but with Anne Hathaway's, they kind of did the same thing with Michelle Pfeiffer's, where like she wasn't crazy, but she was just there, and there was like a hint of the romance thing that you really don't get towards the end of the you know the final scene of the movie. But um, I imagine they're going to be going more that route and probably taking more of an interest from the the latest run of uh, like Tom King's run on Batman for having a much more having her in the very first movie as opposed to being introduced in like the third movie for instance, yeah. the second movie makes me think they have much larger plans for her character and would probably be doing a much more much bigger role as far as her interacting with Bruce I would say if I had to guess because otherwise too one why would you cast her to be in the first movie if she's just going to have like kind of a small role but two someone as talented as Zoe Kravitz which if you haven't watched like big little big little lies on HBO everybody out there you should watch it because it might seem like a girly kind of like lame show but i'm telling you it's definitely not it's a really good show and she's really great in it especially with people like she's she's on screen with people like reese witherspoon and uh nicole kidman and just these these big name actors and like she's just as good if not better when she's on screen with them so i mean that's cool she, she's great. So I'm very excited to see her as Catwoman in general. Intrigued with what they're going to be doing with Catwoman, really, when it comes down to it in the end. And like, like you said, we know the Penguin and Riddler are in this movie as well. So Riddler is obviously rumored to be like the main villain, and which is, ob- this is an interesting choice, for one. But I get what you're saying with it being overcrowded and having those concerns just sure. because we're dealing with now four characters, like four key Batman characters are in this movie. Yeah. I mean, actually, if you include Alfred and Commissioner Gordon, I mean, we're looking at like six. Like well, the six. Joker's not going to be probably, you know, like we talked about in the first one, but then you've got him coming in at some point too, hopefully. This is true. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. And there's a lot of things they could kind of do to, they, they could tease a bunch of other villains if they wanted to. I mean, they could they could go to Arkham, well, you know, and like, walk by a bunch of cells and see names or something. But, yeah, and I mean, like, there's just a lot of movies, and one of them that sticks out to me as a good example is Spider Man Three. Um, just oh God, way yeah. too many characters, dude. Not even overload. as bad as Spider Man Three, dude. Uh, Amazing Spider Man Two. Oh yeah, that yeah. was the Spider Man Three was at least more coherently done. Yeah, as far I I, I don't. I don't. It sounds weird trying to say the movie was coherent in any way, but <laughs> when you compare that same thing with the Amazing Spider-Man Two, like that was like they were just trying to introduce the Sinister Six just to do it. Yeah, like yeah. and like it, it's, it's, it's that movie. That, that that movie like bums me out because I really liked Andrew Garfield as. Spider-Man. Yeah, I thought he was a good Peter Parker. Yeah, he was really good. He was a better Spider-Man than he was a Peter Parker. Yeah, his because yeah. they really changed Peter Parker. He was like. He was like a cool Peter Parker. And he yeah, was like a yeah. handsome. He was a skateboard and Peter Parker. I was about to say, yeah, like he skated. Like, and... Yeah, it just not wasn't really Peter Parker. But as Spider Man, he was great. It was like he did the quips, like mm-hmm. you know, he was just sarcastic and he was annoying, like to to the people he was fighting. Which was like, yeah, even to this day, I don't think they've done that with Tom Holland as Spider Man. Like they haven't made him nearly. He's he's quippy as Peter Parker and he's like awkward as Peter Parker. Yeah. But he's not as quippy as like Peter Parker really like truly is. And like, they really nailed that with Andrew Garfield yeah. in my opinion. Like, and but I love Tom Holland, Spider-Man too. He's the only thing I have like, about Tom Holland, Spider-Man is he just to me at least and not to be ageist. He seems way too young. And that's just me. I mean, they put him in high school. Yeah. This is kind of the setting. True, true. Yeah, I mean, like... He no. looks very young as Peter Parker. He does. I mean, he is, like... like 20, he looks like a kid. He's, like, 23 years old. Probably. I know. He definitely doesn't look like it, though. He doesn't look like it. I mean, that's why they can get away with him playing a 17-year-old. Yeah, exactly. Right? That's why I, I kind of hope that... Uh, I know this is a little off top from Batman stuff, but with the Tom Holland Spider-Man, I, I hope that he kind of keeps playing Spider-Man, like Hugh Jackman. Yeah. He played Wolverine. Like Wolverine, yeah. Because then you could just see, especially with him, you can see him like grow up and become adult Peter Parker, who I think is a really cool character. Adult Peter Parker is super cool. Like, yeah. It's just, I don't you just, there's a lot of great stories of when uh, Peter Parker is like done with college and he's, you know, out on, he's being Spider Man full time. And like, there's a lot of good stuff to do there. So, like, I would, I would like to see Tom Holland 
kind of grow with the role, which is kind of the same reason that they cast him to play Nathan Drake in the Uncharted movies, because they're hoping it's a a good franchise that can kind of keep going and he can grow up and do this for the next 10 years. So like, I don't know. I would like to see, because that's one thing I feel like we never really got with Spider-Man because with Tobey Maguire's, he never looks like he should be in high school. No, not at all. But he yeah. also never acted like he was an adult. <laughs> yeah. Like, to, 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 it to, was kind to of capacity. A little weird. Yeah. yeah. So like we never really got that. And then we kind of got it with, I'd say Andrew Garfield's was a nice mix because he was like in college. Yeah. So he was a little more together with himself. He looks like but, Peter Parker the most to me. Andrew Garfield. Yeah. I mean, he definitely had a look and, and that was the first time too. I mean, the, the uh, Tom Holland suit, because they animated the eyes, yeah, is the best one they've done. But at the time, the Amazing Spider-Man two suit, five movies into Spider-Man, was the first time they actually got the eyes like comic accurate. Yeah, like, they were yeah. nice and big, and like it was the perfect Spider-Man suit. Like the suit in Amazing Spider-Man two was literally perfect. Yeah, I was but, not a fan of like Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man suit. No, I never cared for him. Like, silver like, webbing and yeah, the, the webbing being like. 3D. It was like 3D too. Yeah, it was like like I, it, it looked good. It was fine for the time and everything, but they just nailed that suit in the main Spider-Man too. But then once you see the animated eyes, that is so much more comic book accurate too, because you can see the expressions he's making. Yeah, it's so you it's, can it's, see it's a lot the emotion. Better. Yeah, so which is is what they did with Deadpool. Yeah, so like I think we can all thank Deadpool for making that work. Because thank you, Deadpool. Yeah, it's really. It does add, a, I know it's a lot more extra work, but uh, well, Alex, we jump back into Batman with this one real quick. <laughs> Do you think they should animate Bruce's eyes to glow white? I don't know. I've actually always thought about that from back like in the days of the cartoon and the comics and all mm-hmm. that. And I don't know how you could really explain his eyes being white in like a realistic fashion. You know, other than like he's got like Iron Man style, like LEDs under the mask or something. I if mean, they, to me, if they give him a, a hood, he had, like, like a, a heads up technologically display. Technologically advanced to like cow like mm-hmm. it would make sense but not with like a leather i don't know right the regular eyes don't really bother me they don't bother me either it's it's just more of an aesthetic that a lot of fanboys have always asked for because it does yeah. look good it looks in like again deadpool proved how good it looked i always thought now, it was funny too in any of the batman movies like he's always got black around his eyes under the mask but when he right. takes the mask off he the black's not there. yeah exactly yeah. Like, is that built yeah. into the mask when like, he takes it off he should look like a raccoon yeah, exactly but, but yeah. he doesn't exactly no, which is kind of the which is kind of the whole point though, because they they go for the aesthetic of with that you only see the whites of his eyes. Yeah, which like, looks good. When that's the aesthetic they're going for. Oh, so why isn't it on its face? I know, but, but that would be solved if they animated the eyes to glow white. True. You know what I mean? You wouldn't so, even have to do the black, right? And I mean, if they kind of if you were because I don't think it would work with Robert Pattinson's leather cow that he's starting out with. Yeah, it's an updated cow. It might work like if they just if if they went like out of their way to explain like because if you remember at the end of the dark night the the end of the dark night when he does the little his eyes glue glue white yeah they did briefly when he did the thing where he could like see through the when he was fighting the joker at the end i forget what even the purpose was but uh it was almost like x-ray vision kind of yeah he could like like, track stuff yeah but his eyes glue white then so i mean if they could kind of if i could see them doing it if one Pattinson gets an updated cow, and then like he has a heads up display, kind of like when you see Iron Man, and they do like just a shot of Tony with his. Like, yeah, yeah. If now if they explain that his new suit has a heads up display because of the goggle things that are covering his eyes, and in turn they glow white, that would make sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would make sense. And that's not really too far fetched either. With right. Technology nowadays. Yeah, it would. It would make sense to some degree. But so. you're talking like having his eyes animated like Deadpool or something. No, you like, shouldn't do that. No, okay. Because that it, would be a little unreal. Yeah, because with Batman, I mean, I don't know. Because in the animated shows, they do make his eyes expressive. Yeah, he's got quite and a bit they're of glowing expressive. white eyes, and they are expressive. Yeah. Normally, they're mo- he just kind of sits straight face though, so you don't see it too much. Yeah. He just kind of deadpans everything because he's Batman. Yeah. But Cause that's another thing. Like, I do think if you, it's it's kind of a, it's a kiss curse kind of situation because if you animate the eyes, you kind of have to go with adding expressions. Yeah. Because if you don't add expressions to it, then 
you lose out on seeing your eye because that's like the eyes are the window to the soul. So like it's, when, when, especially with someone wearing a mask and all you can see is their eyes, you lose out on like uh, any sort of emotion that the character like would be showing. So if they were just like light up LEDs on his eyes and you never, you would, you'd lose out on any sort of emotion. Yeah. yeah so definitely. so I, I, the easiest route is probably to not do it. Would it look cool? Absolutely. I think even maybe if they just kind of had it in there, kind of like they did for the Dark Knight, like if he's doing something like sciency or techy, like if he needs to be able to see, you know, goes into detective mode, like in the uh, the games, right? Yeah. If you go into a mode like that, and like some little things pop down over his eyes and they glow white, or like maybe maybe it could be like a night vision thing. So when he's out on the thing, he just pops it down and then turns on and it glows white you know? yeah it would be a cool aesthetic i mean because it would look accurate but I, I do i do think though like long term if you don't animate them you lose a lot of emotion that you would yeah. gain from the eyes well and the mouth isn't nearly as expressive in that sort of situation i feel like as the eyes would be in, right you know I, I, but it could be beneficial not. true true because you know he want if, if you're going for the whole dark like yeah you want it to be imposing and deadpan that's why like people wearing masks in general is like spooky because you you can't see what's underneath yeah that's the whole that's kind of the whole point so i mean i don't know it could work either way i would almost feel like if they did and if they wanted to do the light up eyes like a lot of like fanboys want and like there was even rumors that they thought uh Pattinson's eyes would be lit up, and there's a bunch of artists who took the images of that we've gotten of him in the suit yeah. and made them white and everything. But people thought that they were going to be lit up because of the stunt guy on the the, the motorcycle. Oh yeah, with because the he had goggles on. But I think like there were little lenses over his eyes. But I'm like 99% sure they were just there for protection because it was like raining out while they were filming. Yeah, you could even yeah. see like they looked dirty. Mm-hmm. And then they were. Just, I would imagine they were just there for eye protection, and then they were going to CGI them out just if they needed to for like those scenes they were getting. Yeah. So I don't know. I'm curious to see about it. Didn't mean to go on a Batman eyeball rant for like <laughs> ten minutes of this it's an video. Interesting feels topic. Like. I mean, but yeah, I mean, it is related at the very least. We did go on a Spider Man rant for quite a bit talking about Batman stuff. But you know what, though. Batman is the best DC hero and Spider-Man is the best Marvel hero. So it just kind of goes hand in hand that, you know, maybe one will be talked about when the other's talked about to some capacity. But anyways, guys, let us know in the comment section below if you are excited to see Zoe Kravitz as Catwoman. And do you agree with her that Robert Pattinson, based on just his life experience and just using that one example she did alone, if he's a good choice for it, like you think that she thinks he is. And then more importantly, though, does that uh, the fact that she said kind of the same thing I was saying before, where Bruce Wayne is the mask and Robert Pattinson or not Robert Pattinson, but Batman is, you know, he's the real guy. She yeah. was kind of hinting at that. Do you guys feel the same way? And like, are you excited to see her as Catwoman? Let us know in the comments below.